let's talk about web apps. This question actually came in from Twitter. Is Go and the ecosystem in a place where it can compete with Rails slash Laravel slash Django for dynamic websites? I don't think so. I... <laughs> okay, honestly. I mean, that's a style of development that I don't think Go is like particularly suited for, those big like monolithic like server-side rendered apps. I, I'm just not sure it makes sense in the frame of Go. What a bit, What is it about the language or the ecosystem that makes you say that is it the the strong typing or the lack of you know the fact that they're dealing with about that dynamic user generated content or i think it's a lot like the distrust of magic like if you think about like rails or something like that or wire what's is that the new rails like dynamic front end bit um hot wire yeah hot wire all of that like just does things and you have no idea what it's doing <laughs> Um, and I think that's not okay, tolerated so, well in Go and the Go community. Okay. So it, let me translate that and see if I'm I'm picking up what you're saying here. Because dynamic web apps that have a lot of user generated content or input, building those at scale—I don't mean scale of like users, but like breadth of surface area, lots of forms, lots of pages, lots of what have yous—requires from a framework perhaps a lot of either code generation or uh, reflection-based stuff to ma make you not have to write a bunch of code yourself every time you wire up a form and Go is against, it's not against the code gen, at least it seems like, but it's against the metaprogramming stuff that Rails and these other ones use in order to cut down on your scaffolding and your coding. Is that kind of what you're saying? Or did I just say a bunch of stuff that you didn't say? No, that is what I'm saying. I'm, okay. As you say it back, I'm not totally sure I agree with what I'm saying. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's, that was kind of the, pra the purpose of the practice to see if we were... Okay. I mean, I think there is something in the com Go community that does dislike the idea of these big frameworks, these big things. And I'm not sure like if it's one, reasonable. A full, service, a full service framework. Yeah, I'm not sure it's reasonable, but it does exist. I don't. I don't think we can okay. deny like the skepticism of that exists. Okay. I mean, I I feel like we're comparing uh, apples to oranges a little bit because it's like you know Ruby, Django. These are not languages, right? The language there is Ruby, Python, whatever. Um, so it's like I think I think really it's like you have to. I think Go is a good language for building these things if you actually have the time and patience to like ramp up and actually build it yourself right like i think if if you just want the experience of like what rails gives you and have this out of the box boom i can get off to the races build my stuff and then i'm done i can move on then mm -hmm. no go isn't going to be good for that but if you're actually trying to uh either build something so you can actually understand how these things get put together right. or if you're like a bigger organization that like has the engineering capacity to own something like this then i think it can actually be um very good because I think yeah. like you have the knowledge of how the thing works and you wind up having a lot less code that you depend on that you don't own at the end of the day. So I think like the the main argument against using Go for these types of things is like, oh, well, the the getting started period is much longer because you have to build more of the stuff yourself. Right. Um, but and I think that's kind of where I get like a little annoyed with that argument because I personally do not think that that's how we should look at software engineering. I'm, I'm very annoyed that we continually look at things as the how fast can you get going from the beginning and not how do you actually build something you can maintain over the long run? Because that, that's obviously what's more important. Not like I just built something today, but like, oh, three years, four years down the road, this thing is still something that we want to use. We want to add to, we can extend and all of that. Yeah. Um, so I, think I agree with you most of the time. Sometimes you do want to just build fast and, and to test your business idea and not your software system, right? So to test an idea quickly, that's why I think Rails was so popular in startup land was because it was like, we don't even know if this business is going to be here in six months. So why do I have to build an architecture system that's going to last a decade if my business isn't going to last six months? Now, the idea there, I think, is like once you establish, you know, you get your product market fit or whatever the startup guys say, then it's like, okay, let's re-architect this sucker now in like the ways that Chris would build it and like let's build it to last. And I think a lot of times that never happens because the business is taking off and you're just trying to keep the servers up or whatever happens. And that step, you know, prototypes are supposed to be thrown away and we never do. We just turn them into, into yeah. 
businesses. So I, I definitely understand that. What I'm trying to get at, I, I have never quite understood, is is the lack of a Rails or a Django coming out of the Go community because gophers don't like that, just speaking very broadly, or is it because Go as a language isn't well suited for that? And I don't know the answer to that. I think it's um, I think it's because there's not a there's not a need, right? Like um, Rails exists, Django exists, you know, PHP, sure. uh, like Drupal and Symfony, and we're all of these things already exist, and they have large communities and large support around them. So, in order for something like that to exist inside of Go, like we have to like invest a lot of community energy and time into rebuilding all of that and to gaining all of that to get a very small portion of a pie at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. um, and I, so I think that people that are very comfortable with those sorts of things want to do that. And I, I think Go as a language uh, really does attract people that want to do this kind of lower level or not like different, different type of work at the end of the day. Like when I think people that want to go explore Go they're already onto the world of single page web applications and APIs, and they don't want these kind of big monolithic stacks as much anymore. So I think it's like by nature of what Go is really good at and by how crowded the field actually is, I think by the time you get to the point of um, thinking about using Go, you already have a different problem that you're trying to solve than what you would solve with, with Rails or with Django or with Drupal or with any of these other things. Hmm. Well said. Ian, anything to add? No. You're nodding along in agreement. I, I think that right. covers it. Like, yeah. like the idea that those already exist. Like, yeah, why would why would we build another one for a one percent market share? Yeah. Right. Maybe because you want a web app, you love Go. But I guess in that case, then you're going, you're going to hand roll a bunch of stuff like Chris talked about, and you're going to pick each library out, and you're going to build up a thing, which you can do in these other systems. I mean, Sinatra is a thing inside the Ruby land. It's very much has more of a Go philosophy. Um, so it's not like you can't, one of the follow-up questions to that is, does Go do websites? And I was like, well, of course you can do websites, right? With Go, it's just, yeah. uh, you have to build all the parts of your website. I mean, there's templating engines and stuff like that, but yeah. routers, I mean, I, there's all sorts of things. I think that's one of the things that actually makes Go quite good. I mean, I mean, given I did just say all of that, I think that like, if there was a reason for us to build something like a Rails and Go, um, I think it could be like incredibly interesting because we do have a lot of stuff built into the standard library that like gets you halfway there. Yeah, totally. Like, we have a database library that's built in language. We have a templating, a good templating system that you know actually properly escapes HTML and JavaScript and those sorts of things um, right in the built into the language itself. So I think the pieces are all there for it. Yeah. Um, but I just think like the there the hasn't appetite. been someone that yeah that that wants yeah. to go put the effort into to building that sort of thing. Mm -hmm.